Hi everybody, Professor Jeffrey here from Learning English Online with Professor Jeffrey. We've got a great lesson for you today, but first, this. Today, we're going to look at a lesson, My Interesting Life. And this is all about using the past participle. If you remember, past participle um, of a verb in regular verbs is formed in pretty much the same way as you would form the past tense of the verb. So if the verb is regular, then the past tense of the verb will end in ed and the past participle will end in ed. I'll give you an example. Want, wanted, wanted. Okay, so the um, base form of the verb, verb is want. The past tense wanted and the past participle wanted. But when it comes to irregular verbs, there is a difference. And bearing in mind that 75% of all verbs in the English language are irregular, this is where we can start to run into problems. So it's a good idea to teach your students, and this lesson I'm giving today is one at upper elementary pre-intermediate level. So although it may seem a big lesson to be giving them, Trust me, if they are at that level of English, they will be able to understand everything you are telling them in this lesson perfectly. You only have to drill them on regular and irregular verbs. Now, this first part of the lesson, um, we have to match the infinitives of the verbs with their past participles. And they give you one example here of an irregular verb drive. The past tense of the verb is drove and the past participle is driven. So what they are going to do is to match the past participle with the infinitive form or the basic. I like to call it basic because we are not using the to before the verb. Strictly the infinitive is to drive, to walk, to think. But we take off the two and we use what I call the base form of the verb. So where you see in here it says infin infinitive, we are using it without two. So we are just using drive, driven. So what you need to get your students to do first is have a look at these verbs here and match them up with their past participle. Now, some of them will be fairly easy, like the example given, drive driven, there's not too much of a difference between the base form of the verb and the past participle. So let's see how they get on with that, and then you can correct them later. So first of all, get your students to match these up. Um, they can do it by writing them down in their books. They can write them on little bits of paper and match them together, rather like uh, dominoes. Or um, they can take a screen print of this video and actually draw lines between them. But that can be a bit messy. So maybe the um, writing them down on little squares of paper and then matching them up like that is a good exercise and keeps them occupied. Okay, so um, we'll give them a few minutes to, uh, to make that match. Depending on the level of the students in your class, some of them may be able to complete the task fairly quickly. Others may take some time, okay? And then with the more difficult ones, when they have finished this uh, task, you can intervene and give them some help to complete the task. So let's give them a few minutes to complete this particular part of the lesson.
Now it's optional whether you do this next bit, you can get them to work in pairs and test a partner. Only one of you look at the verbs, so if you have them written on, uh, written on little scraps of paper, it would be perfect to uh, split the base form of the verbs between one group and the past participles between another group and they take it in terms of asking. They could say, drive and whoever has got the past participle of it can hold it up and say driven okay so that's something else that you may want to introduce into the classroom to make it a little bit more interesting now the next part of the lesson we have a story about George Hawkins so we're going to read through the story together and then afterwards, get your students to read it again, and then they can answer some of the questions below. So let's just take the questions out of the equation for a minute because it may distract them. But anyway, George Hawkins. I'm 89 years old and I've had such an interesting life. I'm very lucky. I've seen some wonderful places and done some amazing things. I've been to Japan, Australia, North Africa, and all the Scandinavian countries. They're so beautiful, especially in the winter. I haven't been to North America or Asia, but I'd like to go before I get too old. I've flown in a helicopter around Mount Fuji, and I've swum across the English Channel three times, from Dover in England to Calais in France. I've also driven some fantastic cars, and I've even ridden a motorbike across the Italian Alps. I've had some quite unusual jobs over the years. I've been a teacher, a train driver, a soldier, a policeman, and even a stuntman for a film company. I've broken a lot of bones. I've met a lot of film stars such as Marlon Brando, Sophia Loren and Marilyn Monroe. But I haven't met Nicole Kidman, which is a pity. I haven't been very lucky in love. I've never been married. Although there is a nice lady who lives in the same nursing home as me. Who knows? Maybe it's not too late. <laughs> go on, George. Yes, go for it. Okay, so that's the story of George Hawkins and his interest in life. Um, so there are many past participles in there to be found. So let's take a look at the questions you will now set for your students. Which countries has he visited? How many times has he swum across the English Channel? How many jobs has he had? Which famous film star would he like to meet? Has he ever been married? Okay, students, so there you go. That's the text. Now, Depending on how um, good your students are, you may want to let them read through the text again and then maybe cover up the text, hide it, and just let them answer the questions from memory. If they are not too um, uh, experienced, then it may be an idea to leave the text there and let them read through it to get the um, answers to the questions. So it really does depend on the level of your students and you as teachers should know the level uh, that your students are at. Okay, so when you've done that, there are some uh, more questions here. Now, the idea with these questions is, and I'll just move my video over there, you'll see it says name. Because the idea is that they ask friends or family and the question is, have you ever? 
and then you have to use the correct form of the verb i.e. if we are using have you ever then as some of you may have already guessed this is the present perfect tense so you need to use the past participle of the verb and that's where your um, teaching or pre-teaching some of the more common um, irregular verbs will really come into play with this lesson but I will help the students with the first one so the column that says name is where you would normally ask another student in the class or a family member or friends so you write their name in there and you could ask them the question have you ever we need to change fly into the past participle which is flown have you ever flown in an airplane and they can write the name of the person and they can give their answer yeah and these are like yes or no questions have you ever flown in an airplane yes I have flown in an airplane or no I've never I have never or we can contract it using I no I've never flown in an airplane so there we go see how your students get on with these and um, maybe this is an item that you can give them for homework um, the idea with this is they are going to ask a question in the second person singular well it could be um, second person plural because have you can also mean you um, plural many uh, people in the room okay but we'll say just for this exercise it's one to one so they're asking it in the second person singular have you ever flown in an airplane now remember that the person answering the question will say yes I have flown in an airplane or no I've never flown in an airplane but what your student needs to do because there is a name there he's asked that person he needs needs to now think carefully of how if necessary this needs to be changed into the third person singular for instance if he has Michael there and he says Michael we can't say Michael have flown in an airplane so he needs to change it to yes Michael has flown in an airplane okay and it could be that if they've asked a group of friends or a family yeah they would need to put it into the third person plural they okay so this can turn out to be quite an interesting exercise for them um, whether or not you tell the student about the third person um, singular or third person plural is entirely up to you you could leave it in there as a kind of a booby trap to see if they are on the ball and know that when they say the name of a person that that person's name is either he or she yeah so then the verb have needs to change into the third person singular has but anyway you are the teacher I'll leave that up to you to decide so there we go that's our lesson today um, my interest in life and um, George Hawkins I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope it gives you some ideas um, for using with your pre-intermediate or upper elementary classes so really it's pre-intermediate but some upper elementary classes of mine are really clever and they could handle this exercise quite easily you could ask the students to record the audio of the story and send it to you in WhatsApp or whatever you use for your class meetings or you could get them if you're giving the lesson online get them to read the lesson to you to watch out for pronunciation okay 
because that's one thing that's very, very important when you're dealing with ESL, ELL students, that the pronunciation has to be correct. If they're speaking American English, then unfortunately <laughs> they might say later, yeah, or better. But in British English, we prefer the T's to be sounded. They're in there for a reason. So it's later, it's better, okay? Try to get your students to pronounce it. It's like when you teach somebody to drive. A driving instructor will treat you, teach you to drive with both hands on the steering wheel. That's the correct way. But after you pass the test, many people just say, oh, I'll put one hand on the steering wheel, yeah? But if you teach them correctly, as teachers, you have done your job. Okay, guys, so that's my lesson for today. Present perfect tense um, can be positive, can be negative, because the answer can be, um, have you ever, no, I've never. Yeah, don't forget to mention that to them, ever and never. Okay, so until uh, we meet again next time, guys, it's me, Professor Jeffrey, saying bye-bye for now. Ciao.